and we are live. Good morning, everybody. It's your favorite truck driver in the whole wide world. It's Bitcoin Ben. Good morning, my friends. Today's show is going to be special. It's going to be real special. Shout out to, uh, let's say, Bix Weir and Cliff High and X-22. Uh, because what we're going to talk about today is structure, corporate money laundering structure. Now, I had lunch with Dave from X-22 on Saturday. I had lunch with him and his beautiful wife. Uh, Great people. Great people. Uh, And we talked. And we were able to talk freely where we were at. And uh, my friends, I cannot explain without giving away information that that uh, is best not made public yet. Um, I do have a hint. Pretty soon, you're going to see a Trump on X-22. A Trump on X-22. That's a little hint. Just a little, just a little hint. Just saying. Now, hey, Bob, you up? Good morning, Bob. Bob's my cameraman or my camera who follows me. (laughs) So the lunch with Dave and his wife went great. We, We drank quite a few drinks. And we were all feeling pretty good. And Dave and I, I think we're brothers because we literally, we wear the same shoes. Uh, He has, he has tattoos that my wife wanted to get in areas that never mind. Things I noticed about him that were so similar to me and like my environment. And his history is a lot like mine. Uh, How he met his wife is how I met my wife. It, um, the, oh God, there's so much that I want to tell you guys that I don't, that I don't feel comfortable telling you because it was him and me and his wife. And I didn't ask if the information was, never mind. Point is, Look for a Trump on the X-22 spotlight soon. Uh, This, the information that I'm going to give you guys today, right, is information that is X extremely relevant right now. The 
the F T F X T or F T X, whichever the exchange was, F T X. Corporate structure is a money laundering facility. All right, now I'm going to share a screen with you. And I'm going to point out a few, well, really just one right now. Oh, it's not a Ponzi scheme. All right, it's not a Ponzi scheme. It, it, it is a textbook. All right, it is a textbook of money laundering, how to money launder. That's FTX. Now, one of the companies here, I'm going to share a screen. All right, I'm going to put myself up here. There we go. All right. Right. This is the organ, the organizational chart for FTX. All right now, if anybody who's ever ran a company or anybody, yes, yes, this is absolutely true. Right, launder money to the Dems in Ukraine and also use collapse to bash cryptos. Yes, check this out, folks. Now, I want you to look at this area right here. Right, there is a corporation under here, right? This is under the FTX Trading Limited uh, company under FTX, right? Now, what you have to understand here is that this whole group that I am pointing at right here, these are subsidi subsidiary companies of FTX Trading Limited, like Singapore, Turkey, Japan, you know, things like that. Now, this is where it gets extremely interesting. Now, this here, right, FTX Europe AG, right, underneath that, FTX Europe AG, out of Switzerland, is a, um, is a uh, is basically FTX derivatives. This is this is the the company that was created out of FTX Europe AG. Switzerland, Switzerland. So FTX Trading Company created FTX Europe AG out of Switzerland. Now, that created FTX derivatives out of Switzerland, which included all of these, 
All right, now, what I want you to look at here is this part right here. The third party investors, All right? Now, this is where we get down to the nitty gritty. There are three separate third party investors on this chart. But this one is the one you want to look at. The name of the the name of the investors group is CM Equities AG Germany. Now, who are they? Who are CM Equity? All right, number one, they're not out of Germany. They're actually out of New York City. Now, let me read what they do. All right. All right. CM Equity Partners based in New York, provides capital to companies in the federal services, aerospace, and defense industries. This is how they funneled money to the Ukraine. This company, CM Equity Partners is how FTX funneled money to Ukraine through this company because CM Equity Partners, remember, I'm reading from their website, based in New York, provides capital money to companies in the federal services and aerospace and defense industries. For nearly 30 years, CME partners have uh, partnered with management teams to build value in investment companies by leveraging its long-standing industry knowledge relationship operations experience and its corporate finance, M&A, and private equity expertise. Now, who is CM Equities Partners? Who are they? All right. Well, let's, these are the, uh, These are the directors at CM Equity Partners, right? We have several ex-generals, right? We have an admiral. We have Michael Cromwell, if you know who he is and James Pallard, Mark Carmen, right, Glenn Davis. I want you guys to do your own research on each of these people. Now, CME Equity Partners, where are they located? What's their address? 900 3rd Avenue, 33rd floor, New York City. Telephone number right there. Now, 
who else is at that address? Well, I'll be damned. They share an office with a company called Carl Marx Real Estate Group. That seems odd that they share an office with a company called Carl Marx Real Estate Group. Hmm. Exactly, Tom. The hell do you say? Now, this I, I look at all of the companies. Now, mind you, Carl Marx, wait a second, I thought it was a real estate company, but they list CM Equity Partners, the defense funders as a principal in investing branch. My friends, do you know the easiest way to launder money? One of the easiest ways is to actually use rental properties let let me put it this way all right let me put it this way here let 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 me get rid of this screen all right what what in the hell is a finance a a military financing company doing launching a company with FTX crypto does that make sense to you so the CME Equity Partners launch a company with FTX. That means FTX funds the company. And that, that money goes into and is commingled with the Karl Marx real estate company in New York. Then, then see, here, hang on a second. Let, let me go back. All right. This whole structure here, this whole corporate structure of FTX is one big money shuffle. And you always look at the at the bottom lines. Right? There is more money being shifted, right, than I have. Uh, this makes Enron. All right, this is how. This is how crazy this is. Right, it's Janet. Yes, yes, bingo. It's a joke all the time in our faces. Yes, Karl Marx 
real estate on the 33rd floor. If, if you don't understand <laughs> the, the odd, now mind you, no one in the company is named Karl Marx. The people that launched Karl Marx real estate, none of them are named Karl Marx. Right? This, this whole chart here, this FTX chart, this makes Enron look like a joke. For those of you who don't remember or are too young to remember, remember in Enron, that was a chit show. And Enron was the same thing. It was a money laundering company. That's what it was, right? So you have all of this structure and then it falls apart. Now, you have to understand who's at the top of this. At the top of this, is, hang on a second. Right? Hang on one second. Give me a second. All right, I'm going to move these over here. All right. Number one. All right. FTX linked Alameda Research CEO Caroline Ellison what to know, right? And yes, Ellison and Sam Bankman Freed were girlfriend, boyfriend. There's a sex tape out, no shit, swear to God. Don't watch it. There's nothing you want to see there. All right, now, Caroline Ellison, right? Who is she? Who is Caroline Ellison? Well, let's check it out. Caroline Ellison's parents are Glenn and Sarah Fisher Ellison. Both are great American economists. So the art, so the article says. Now, this is her. This is the twat. And yes, she was in a sex scene. All right. You don't want to see it. All right. This is Caroline Ellison. Now, let me read this to you. All right. Caroline Ellison and her parents, Glenn Ellison. Who are Caroline Ellison's parents? Caroline Ellison is born to her parents' father, 
Glenn Ellison and mother Sarah Fisher Ellison. Now, her father is an American economist at MIT. Right? Now, mind you, he is not just a professor. This is the this was the boss of Gary Gensler. Gary Gensler is the head honcho of the SEC. This is his boss at MIT. Daughter is Caroline Ellison of FTX. Right now, who is Sarah Fisher Ellison? Well, that's her mom. Who is she? She is a senior lecturer in the MIT Economics Department with her husband, the head of the MIT Economic Department. So their two children, their daughter was the CEO and girlfriend of FTX, right? Her research has looked into a variety of issues related to industrial organization with a focus on e-commerce and the pharmacological sector. Interested? God, that's an ugly woman. That hey, I'm not I don't like knocking women's look, but damn man. Right? Caroline Ellison is the CEO of Alameda Research. Right? This, this gal, number one, this gal's 30. 30? She looks like she's freaking 12. All right. Now, listen. <laughs> Listen to this, 130 FTX group affiliates, including Alamina, were listed in a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing made last week. Now, what they're not telling you is that All of these, all right, hang on a second. All of these here, all of these companies here are being shielded from public knowledge of their involvement with FTX. Their, the courts are not letting the people see any of this, any of the internal filings of the entities. So 
they are literally trying to hide what all of these companies were doing inside of a bankruptcy. Right. Bingo. Time to bring these companies out of the shadows. That's what we are trying to do. We are trying to show the people. And this is why, this is why I'm making this video specifically for you guys and also for X22 and Pixweer and uh, Cliff High. So they can include this information in what they know. This is information that I, uh, I have been researching this weekend. They're all looking at other aspects also, but we're all like doing our own little part. Now, what What makes it so crazy is is anybody, it, anyone with any corporate corporate knowledge, right? F T X. We're not talking a company that's been around for 50 years. We're not talking a company that has been around for three years. Do you know how, how long and how many, how much paperwork you have to file to create this much or you cannot create this much of a corporate organizational chart. You can't make it this big in the amount of time that they've done it without governmental help. You have to think, let me read off some of the countries that are all involved. You mean to tell me in what, two and a half years that they've existed, give or take, that they've been able to create this large of a corporate structure in two and a half years. There is no, trust me, folks. Right. You guys know that I run or I help run the venture capital group called the Founders Group, right? The Founders Group is, is a corporate structure. You know how long it has taken to build just what we've built, and it is teeny tiny compared to this. like almost two years to launch one of these, right? Let me show you again, right? Hang on a second. All right, so take this name up here. Hey, Sam, Hankman fried out. 
put Bitcoin back. Lori and and that's really it. To launch one entity, <laughs> one of these little blocks has taken us almost two years. So you mean to tell me that this one company, FTX, that is just about as old as we are, launched this whole global corporate chart in two years. You know how many lawyers I had to go through? You know how, you know how many hoops we had to jump through just to launch our company in El Salvador. And that's a crypto friendly government. Yeah. There, there ain't no way in hell that they built this large, all right, this is not normal. What we're looking at here, this, this organizational chart is not normal. This is, this is not a normal corporate chart at all. This is an Enron chart. This is a, this is a catch me if you can chart. This is a confuse the shit out of anybody looking at it chart. This is, this is, this is purposely created yes this is this is a deep state chart and yes Tom I agree we got a hundred and thirty people watching on YouTube let's get some likes and subscribe and share this you guys that's something hang on a second that's something else that I want to talk to you guys about. Let me let uh, let me get rid of these. All right, I, I want I want you guys to understand the purpose of me and Dave from X twenty two having lunch on Saturday was because we have to come together. And let me tell you what, Dave is linking up with some very important people. I'll leave it up to him to roll out that information. But the key is, you guys have to help us share the information. You have to send my videos, Dave's, whoever you think covers it the best, or whoever you think explains whatever piece you're trying to explain to your friends. It's the only way that we're going to wake the people up. Why do you think General Flynn was on X-22? What? My belly's rumbling. Why do you think, hint, A. Trump 
is going to be on X-22. There's, there's a lot of things coming that, and a lot of things coming together, and a lot of groups, like the headline says, the groups are coming together to defeat the Fed in the DS. Bitcoin. I'm telling you now. <laughs> wink, wink. All right. I'm telling you guys now. We're in a war. We're in an information war. All right. We, you, you guys are the key to all of it. If you don't get that, then you don't see the bigger picture. You have to, you have to put it out on social media. All right. No, Carrie, no, I don't know. Flynn, DeSantis, and Lake are not part of the deep state. Don't let anybody try to fool you. Now, last week, when Trump announced his presidency, I want you guys to go back and listen to it again. And listen to the part where he says that he talked to DeSantis in Florida a while back. And that DeSantis was giving him a compliment. And that DeSantis said, Mr. Trump, you've done something that hasn't been done since the Civil War, since Reconstruction. Then, wait, Trump pauses and says, is that what you call it? Do you call it? Reconstruction. And DeSantis says yes. Now, for anyone else, number one, why would Trump bring this up? During the announcement speech that he is running for president. Why would Trump bring up an old conversation between him and DeSantis during the presidential announcement that he's running for office? If you know your history, you know why. Be, and I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do a Patreon show after, or probably today, maybe tomorrow, on exactly what he meant by this. And I'm going to go step by step, right? But what Trump was saying as he was describing this conversation with DeSantis is what happened during Reconstruction in Florida after the Civil War. 
You have to know history to see what's going on. It's why I do my history slash finance show on Patreon. Because once you understand that Trump was basically saying that DeSantis is going to absorb a bunch of money from deep state players. Because, my friends, we knew that they would try and bring a Republican out to go against Trump. It's why the election in Florida was such a landslide because they let it be an honest election. And it showed, I mean, DeSantis mopped the floor in Florida. So the deep state goes and meets with DeSantis. Oh, you're going to be our guy. You're our fella. You're our, we're going to put you up against Trump and, and we're going to beat Trump. And then DeSantis comes out and says, we need to make progress. We need to move forward. We need to, my friends, they are playing the deep state like a fiddle just like they did it after Reconstruction, after the Civil War. You have to speak Trump in order to understand what Trump is saying. Trump uses historical references to tell you what he's doing. Like, here's a perfect example, all right? When the whole corona thing started, Trump said in an announcement talking about the pandemic that we haven't seen anything like this since 1917. Now, if you know your history, <laughs> you understand that the 1917 Spanish flu originated, listen to me, folks, in Indiana. The first known cases were in a military complex in Indiana in 1917. That military uh, group in Indiana, that's how they spread the Spanish flu across the world, supposedly, right? If you, bingo, bingo, military labs, right? Now, if, if you understand the place in Indiana, Right, that the 1917 Spanish flu originated from. If you understand that that property now is part of a university that 
is ran and howls and produces biochemistry projects for the federal government. See, you, you have to know history to understand what we are going through now. And Trump tries to drop hints using historical events of the past to explain the road forward. He he brought up that conversation with DeSantis during his speech to announce his run for president. Why would you mention, supposedly, one of your competitors during the speech that you're doing to announce your intentions for running for president, right? And why would you do it in a positive light? Why would you, why would you reference the reconstruction? Why would you ask DeSantis, is that what you call it? Do you call it the reconstruction era and not the civil war era? Yes, I do. That's a hint, folks. That's a hint. That's Trump telling you that the Civil War was not the important part of that block of history. It was the Reconstruction and specifically what happened in Florida during the Reconstruction. I'll give you a hint. 40 acres and a mule. Ninety-nine percent of the people watching still have no clue. Yes, that's why we're watching right on my on my Patreon channel. We're watching a movie called The Birth of a Nation. It's very difficult. It it is right, but it is that's the first motion picture ever played at the White House is the birth of a nation. You have to understand the legal term nation in accordance with global common law. See, I'm telling you folks, please do me a favor. Click under here, join the Patreon, and, and start to realize, all right, I got three tiers. I got the $5 tier, that's for like general inf information with me. Then I have the X22 level, that helps like Dave's viewers like get in cryptos. We help educate them on cryptos. Then I got the $50 level, which is the history and the investment level. I, my history show is eventually going to be on the founders group platform. All right. And Oh, good Lord. 
right. It's, yes, thank you. Now, go to www.patreon.com backslash Bitcoin Ben. But also, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Calix Solutions, the crypto-only laptops. And now, Liberty Laptops. We The Liberty Lap, please, people, under understand what understand what we're building understand what me dave uh picks we're calyx solutions understand what we're building we are building a a separate system to access the separate system you're going to need a laptop that is not corrupted with the the fence of the deep state. This Liberty laptop is specifically designed and has software and information on it to erase you from the internet and start over with the ability to, and I wrote this down up here so I could read it. The laptop is systematically produced for online sovereignty where when you open up your Liberty laptop and you do the list that we send you with the laptop, you get erased off the internet and you relaunch your internet activity off of the Liberty laptop and no one knows who you are, and you can go to areas of the internet that you couldn't go before. Google had you guys locked in about maybe 10% of the, of the internet. That's the illusion. That's the illusion part. The rest of the internet is the reality part. Listen, call 702-845-8276 and talk with Patrick. Get a Liberty laptop and get yourself ready for the great reset that we are doing. Love you guys. I got to go. Bye.